Hello, I'm Ron Strickland. This webcast is one of a series in which I'm providing some brief lectures and commentaries on topics from the courses I teach in literary and cultural studies. Here, I'm going to say some things about the role of art in medieval society, in modernity, and in the emerging conditions of postmodernity. One of the conditions that distinguishes the production of art in the medieval period most sharply from that of the modern period is that in the medieval period the artist is generally unknown. The purpose of art is didactic. The meaning of a work is separate from and more important than the self-expression of the artist. Another thing that distinguishes medieval art from modern art is that the art of the Middle Ages was typically produced in collaboration. The grand medieval cathedrals, such as Lincoln Cathedral in England, which is shown here, took decades to build. The artisans and craftsmen who began the work might not even live to see the end. In the pre-modern era, there was no market for art as we know it today, so artists were not independent agents. Instead, artists worked as servants of aristocratic patrons or in the church as members of clerical orders. Artists were expected to produce what their masters told them to produce rather than to express their own individuality. In modernity, the artist will increasingly be seen as a heroic individual genius. The expectation that the work of art will be a unique expression of the artist's individual genius is perhaps the most distinctive feature of art in the modern period. And it's a feature that distinguishes modern art most clearly from art produced in the Middle Ages. The talent and the skill of the artist will become more important than the didactic theme of the artwork. And quite often the artwork is assumed to be inspired by the distinctive individual experience of the artist. Whereas medieval art often featured hortatory and celebratory themes, modern art is often expected to be a form of social criticism. Modern artists are expected to show the flaws of rulers and heroes, not merely to praise them. During the modern epoch, art becomes a commodity something that can be exchanged for money. One effect of the commodification of art is that it gives the modern artist a kind of a freedom and a kind of an independence that the medieval artist didn't have. The modern artist chooses what theme to express in his or her art and chooses how to express it. In modernity, the artist is admired as someone who has a unique vision. But if the public doesn't respond, the artist may starve. And, indeed, some of the most famous artists of the modern period are precisely those who suffered through an early period of struggle. Their early hardship only enhances their stature as heroic geniuses. In postmodernity, it becomes more and more difficult to take these notions of the artist as genius or the artist as hero terribly seriously. So, increasingly in postmodernity, the attitude toward art and the artist is one of cynicism. One of the many ways that postmodernism challenges grand narratives, such as the notion of artist as hero or of art as a source of transcendent moral value, is to blur the boundaries between so-called serious art and popular or commercial art. In modernity, it's assumed that the great work of art is something that, by definition, transcends considerations of economics and politics. Postmodern artists deliberately flout boundaries like this. They mix styles, strategies, and genres from the canonical traditions of serious art with those of commercial art and political propaganda in order, among other things, to invite audiences to consider the very legitimacy of these kinds of boundaries. Some artists and intellectuals of the high modernist era were horrified by what they saw as the degradation of civilization in the era of industrial modernity and mass urbanization. Other artists and intellectuals were equally alarmed but looked to the future 
to utopian societies for an antidote to the alienation of modern society. Postmodern artists and intellectuals, by contrast, recognize the alienating, dehumanizing effects and consequences of consumerism, post-industrialism, and technologization in the so-called information society. They see the same horror that the modernists saw, but they embrace it, sometimes even celebrate it, recognizing that it's the only world we have. Moreover, postmodernism sees reality as a series or a network of contingent simulations or representations or performances. Postmodernism rejects a clear-cut dividing line between reality and perception. So much postmodern art explores the notion that if reality seems not so desirable, that reality is merely one of many simulacra, and a different reality might be evoked simply by the performance of a different subjectivity. In order to illustrate some of the distinctions I'm trying to suggest between modernity and postmodernity, between modernism in art and postmodernism, I want to consider some examples of a distinctively modern genre of painting, the still life, and to show the development of the genre of still life through modernity and into postmodernity. This first painting from the 16th century by Tommaso Salini is a beautifully rendered, realistic depiction of very trivial, ordinary, everyday items. A basket of fruit, some nuts, a little mouse, ceramic vase, and so on. The ordinariness of these items is precisely the point. What's important is the artist's skill, not the objects being painted. Here's a later still life, 300 years later, by Paul Cézanne, an Impressionist painter. Even though this painting was painted 300 years after Salini's painting, it exhibits less technical expertise. For Cézanne, the point is not to demonstrate technical expertise, but to express his inner feelings. Finally, here's a painting that I consider to be the quintessentially postmodern take on the modern genre of still life. This is such a realistic painting that its realism turns into a kind of a joke. Warhol is mocking the naive assumption that realistic depiction makes a good painting. As always, if you have questions or comments as you're reading about and thinking about this topic, don't hesitate to send me an email.